This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Hey guys, I'm Primitive Tim, and today we're heading down to South Florida. And basically the, the purpose of this trip is to just find some really crazy wildlife that I can't find up in Central Florida where I live. So we're gonna be looking for a lot of exotics that have been released or have escaped uh, pythons, chameleons, maybe even some caimans. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of road cruising, shining, and just hiking. And so go back and look on my how to find stuff videos and you'll be able to kind of get an idea of how all of that works. Now I want you to meet my uh, my buddy uh, Captain Hoo Ha here. Senor Hoo Ha, check uh, it in. Senor Hoo Ha. It's gonna be absolutely sickening. My body is ready. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoy this. This is gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm glad I can take you guys on my adventures. And um, thanks for watching. Enjoy. All right. So uh, the sun is going down, and that is when. Uh, finding stuff is best here in South Florida because it's so hot during the day and so a lot of things that are active during the day You can find sleeping and then a lot of things that aren't active during the day. You can find them being active. So um, Nighttime is really good. And so the sun's going down uh, Tonight's gonna be exciting. All right, Alex. I want to ask you about your camera. Yeah, tell me about the lens cap My old lens cap wasn't cutting it. So I had to go with the sock. I believe it uh, bumps up the camera's aesthetics by at least two points yeah, so the sun has already hit the horizon and it's still 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, it's gonna be a hot night, I guess. All right, so Alex has a little kit here and there's like, what, 50 little capsules. And basically what he's doing is whenever we find a dead snake that's been hit on the road, we're gonna be taking a little piece of the tail and sticking it in the capsule so he can bring it back to, to UCF, University of Central Florida, and um, they can do DNA tests and just kind of run things and they'll have a better idea about the DNA of the species we find. All right, so we got a uh, Florida water snake. And those seem to be pretty common, but what was cool was we got to um, we got to find it on a crawl out in the woods rather than crossing a road. So I always prefer to find things like that. And oh my gosh, the mosquitoes are getting bad. I gotta get out of here. So this is the Brooks King snake. This is an incredibly rare snake to find. And down here in South Florida, you just don't see them very often. In fact, anywhere in Florida, king snakes are generally pretty rare. So to find this animal here is absolutely amazing. And what's even more amazing is we found it while hiking and shining at night. Now, king snakes are snake eaters. They're known for eating other snakes. And this individual here is in a good place because here in the Everglades, there's a lot of snakes, especially water snakes and cottonmouths. And and king snakes don't care if they're eating a venomous snake or a non-venomous snake. So the venom of that cottonmouth is actually useless against the king snake. King snakes are immune to other snake venoms. So that's why they're called the king of snakes. Because venomous or not, they'll eat them and they won't even bat an eye. Now even seeing one of these snakes is absolutely amazing. And I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe of this animal right here. This is a once in a lifetime find right here. Now these snakes are very rare because they don't spend a lot of time out in the open because they oh, yeah, tend to stay in a hole or hidden somewhere unless they're out hunting. And so this one was actually just resting in the leaf litter. Now we were able to get it out for some photos real quick. And so here's Alex doing his thing, getting some really awesome photos. Throughout the night we continued to shine in the bushes and the thick vegetation. This resulted in some really cool finds. It looks like it's a yellow rat snake crossed with an Everglades rat snake. So it's really young, so it's still kind of hard to tell. It's got a lot of really bright yellow there under the chin. Now this rat snake is really young, and so at this age, they're gonna be eating mostly lizards or, or frogs. So he's on the crawl up in the trees looking for these arboreal lizards and frogs. So Alex keeps on uh, running up ahead of me and finding stuff. Also, we found this really light colored brown water snake. Normally, they're a little bit darker than this guy. Of course, we found a few exotics up in the trees sleeping, like this nidinal. We found several of these, and um, they're cool finds, but of course, they're not native to Florida. Also, we chanced across the occasional sleeping iguana way up in the trees, almost always over water. All right, this awesome little creature right here, this is the Ustalus chameleon. And what's crazy is here in South Florida, there's actually breeding populations of them, but these guys are from the arid regions of Madagascar. And so to see something so wild and bizarre, like this little guy, 
it's just absolutely amazing to be able to come here to Florida and find them. Now, this is just a young one. This is actually the second biggest of the chameleons, rivaled by the Parsons chameleon, which also lives in Madagascar. But um, being here in Florida, we actually found it in like one of the drier types of habitats in Florida. And so it's kind of cool that they're utilizing a similar habitat type to their home habitats over in Madagascar. So this female being like kind of greenish colored, that's kind of a telltale sign, especially when they're young like this. And so again, these guys are also gonna be out sleeping at night and they're active during the day. And so we're able to actually find them at night. Wow, what an amazing little creature. All right, so this awesome, look, ooh, he's, he's angry. But this awesome little creature right here, this is a brown basilisk. And they're actually pretty common here in South Florida. And um, the cool thing about them is these legs back here. This allows them to actually run straight across water. And so we've actually seen them, you know, where you're walking along a ditch and all of a sudden one of these will take off all the way across the ditch. And, I mean, they're just a blur. So when we come out at night, we're actually able to catch them because during the day, they're very alert and very quick. So we can't even get close to them because they're just going to take off and they're lightning fast. So at night, they'll be up in the trees sleeping and we can sneak up on them and uh, catch them while they're sleeping. But look at this. This is just an amazing creature and absolutely resembles a little dinosaur. I got to give a big thanks to Primitive Tim fan Nick Nunez for helping us find this crocodile. Right beneath me is the American crocodile. And what's crazy about South Florida is a lot of the stuff we find is actually right around where people live, including this federally protected American crocodile. And this guy is just, he's awesome and he's big. And he's actually only about half as big as he can potentially grow. So this guy's about seven feet. They can reach lengths of over 14 feet. These guys are just like dinosaurs. Now these have a pretty restricted range here in Florida. They only live in the very southern part of Florida. So here we're in like southern Miami and um, they're gonna be living along the coastal areas and kind of the salt marshes. Now the difference between alligators and crocodiles is of course the, the snout is a little bit narrower on the crocodile but if you can see here right in there he's actually got teeth coming up through his snout and so those little holes fit those teeth right up in there if he grabs something he's gonna easily be able to walk into that and whatever he grabs is not getting away so there was the American crocodile man I love these guys all right so this is a Brahmini blind snake. And I mean, I know it looks like a little worm, but this is actually a snake. And what's funny is both sides look just about the same, except the head, it'll flick its little tiny tongue out, and then the tail actually has a little spine. And with that little spine, it'll try to poke you, but um, of course it's completely harmless. And whew, it's just so tiny. And now these are another non-native to Florida. And what's cool is when I lived in the Marshall Islands, I would actually find little blind snakes just like this. And so they would live on just the tiniest of islands. And um, they're just really adaptable. And in these tropical sort of areas, they're able to survive and do pretty well. And they're found over most of the most of Miami and the coastal areas as well. And they also live down in the Keys. But I mean, this guy's just tiny. Look at him, I mean, he slithers just like a snake, though he looks like a little worm. Now these guys live underground and so Ice, they're called blind snakes because you know they don't need eyesight underground when they're surrounded by dirt all the time. So they're gonna be using that um, that tongue to sense out prey, and then of course stalk it down and eat it. But um, they'll be eating like little um, ant larvae and small things like that. All right, so blind snakes are actually extremely widespread. They can live in a lot of places, and so this one has, even though it's not native to here, they have an extremely vast range on almost every continent. So this is a really cool find, and um, it's really neat seeing something like this that can just be found almost anywhere, and especially that I've actually found one when I was in the Marshall Islands, and now I find one here back in Florida. So look at him, he's so cool. All right, the Everglades racer back here. He's kind of back in the bushes, so I'm gonna pull him out so you guys can see it real quick. Oh, he got me. He got me good. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. So this is the Everglades racer. And 
basically there, this is an endemic species to South Florida with the exception of a small population up in Cape Canaveral near where I'm based out of. So um, this is really cool seeing these guys down here as well as up in Cape Canaveral. Ah, he's a bitey little guy. And that's pretty typical of racers. They like to bite when you catch him. And also back here he's musking on me. So, ooh, that's gross. But uh, these guys are diurnal species. They're active during the day. And they've got these big eyes up here for, uh, for seeing. And so he's kind of sizing me up. We're just kind of having a stare down right here. And um, he'd really like to bite me on the face, but not today, little guy. Now, basically, the, the only way to tell that it's an Everglades racer is that it's gray. And, whoa, and by the range. And so, um, down here, South Florida, we're going to have these really pretty gray uh, colored snakes. He wants my face so bad. He wants it real bad. So, we're going to release him back up in the trees and um, let him go on his way. Ah! <sighs> Man, it's a bitey guy. Because, yeah, he's not happy being held, so we're gonna put him back in the trees. He's back up in the tree where we found him. Well, guys, that's it for part one of South Florida. This trip was awesome. Make sure you tune in next week for part two. Because I don't want to spoil anything, but um, I just want to say this. Pythons, baby chameleons. Also, if you entered for the arrow drawing, make sure you check your inbox. Click the other option on Facebook and um, because I messaged you. So if I don't get a response from you, I'm going to choose someone else. So um, make sure you click the other option and reply. Give me your address and stuff so I can get that sent. So thanks for watching. Until next time, find a new way to appreciate nature. Join me on a series of wild adventures as I travel the world in search of the perfect shot. This is ABTV.